Join me today as we talk about one of the upcoming additions to the Battletech Plastics line, the Urban Mech Land Air Mech. Geek Cabal channel. My name's Bobby, and uh, today we're going to be doing a Battletech video. Now, I don't actually have this thing in hand because so far they haven't actually shown up for purchase yet, I believe. Uh, so I'm going to have to post some pictures because there are clear pictures of the thing now. Uh, I was going to do a video on this last week, but it's, it's better that I, it's probably a good thing I waited. So uh, this is going to be about the Urban Mech Land Air Mech, L-A-M, or LAM. And, uh, yeah, so I don't think I've talked a whole lot here on this channel about LAMs. And I think I've only mentioned them in passing, probably, uh, or maybe one of the earlier Battletech videos. So if I am the only place you're going for Battletech information, this is also going to double as a little bit of education on LAMs. Lambs or land air mechs are mechs that have the capability of transforming into aerospace fighters, essentially. Uh, and then they also have a mid uh, air mech mode, so which makes them able to fly, essentially, uh, or coast. Um, I don't know mechanically a whole lot about them because I haven't used them ever, although I do have some metal miniatures of them that I haven't put together yet. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, now, they date back to the beginning of the game because the game borrowed artwork. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to say that. They didn't borrow artwork. They thought they were purchasing the rights to the artwork to uh, Robotech. And Robotech, one of the main things in the Robotech universe are Veritech fighters. The one from the show is i believe the basis of the model for the i want to say the valkyrie i could be wrong on that but i believe it's the valkyrie uh any of you there in the comments i know for sure let me know uh, i didn't really mean to go into this little side quest here when i started the video i would have looked this up for sure um so uh there might be an edit right here where i pop in and say whether or not that's true or not but anyway uh, in the cartoon, the, in the Robotech cartoon, or Macross, depending on how you came across it, uh, because it was a, a Franken anime, which, little side divergence in the side divergence, if you don't know what that is, that was where you, typically an American studio would buy the rights to multiple shows and re-edit them together into one show, and then redo the lines and everything, uh, Voltron is actually the most famous example of this, I believe. Voltron is actually two entirely different shows fused together in the editing process to make one show and then redubbed and everything else to make Voltron. Uh, Macross is the basis for most of Robotech. Uh, I don't know all the other ones. There's like Super Dimensional Fortress and some other stuff. I'm not super clear on the history of Robotech. But Robotech is a Franken anime, and that's what they thought they were getting the rights to. So, and in Robotech, you have one of the one of the mecha is a is what they call that a Veritech, where it has a mech mode, and then it can transform into what is essentially an F-14 Tomcat. And the original versions of some of the lambs in Battletech could do that. Uh, now. Thanks to a lawsuit with Harmony Gold. Oh, other little side note. The Power Rangers TV show in the United States is an example of that. All the fighting and all that stuff, that's from the, I believe, Korean show is, what that, is where that originates. It might be Japanese, but I believe it's Korean. Uh, and then all these scenes with the actors were all filmed, and then they did voiceovers for the fighting scenes. So, yeah, there you go. A little, little bit of... Uh, history on this kind of stuff. Now, eventually it became completely American, but the, the se first several years, that's what it was. Uh, and now Haim Saban is a billionaire, and mainly because the 
Power Rangers franchise. So, uh, back to Robotech. So they thought they were getting the rights to it. So that included these original lambs. Then there was the Harmony Gold lawsuit. So that forced Battletech to redesign most of these things. And that's where you get into uh, Project Phoenix, which I'm, I'm going to read up some more on that and just do an entirely separate video on that topic. But essentially, they were forced to redesign a bunch of their units. So they would look less like their Robotech equivalents. And then Harmony Gold lawsuit round two occurred whenever uh, Catalyst was going to attempt to launch the Clan Invasion Kickstarter because they had done digital redesigns, which they thought were uh, distinct enough from the original properties to pass muster. And Harmony Gold just came out guns blazing they tried to sue Catalyst. They tried to sue uh, Piranha Games and like two or three other companies. So uh, basically everybody that was connected to anything Battletech. And they had won in the past. And part of that was some like, you know, magical baloney contract that they never actually bothered to show anybody that says that they had international distribution rights and this, that, and the other. And, and uh, yeah, so... Basically, most of the companies dropped out of the suit, except for one of the video game companies. I don't remember which one off the top of my head, but they were like, we're going to go the distance because we're not the ultimate video game right holders for Battletech anymore. Microsoft is, and Microsoft has a far bigger piggy bank than Harmony Gold does, because Harmony Gold, well, the less said about their business, the better, because I don't want them to sue me. So they... Uh, uh, they lost and like for all time kind of lost like it was you know case dismissed with prejudice against everybody with with understanding that this is never coming back up so that's why we're able to have like the marauder and the warhammer and uh, the wasp and several of the other mechs now look a lot closer to their original designs they're still they're still distinct but you can see the the through line and the thought process so a lot better than you could with their project phoenix versions although i don't have a huge problem with some of those project phoenix versions i've got a metal version of the marauder i actually kind of like the look of it uh but i do look, prefer the original marauder uh, but the other one's not terrible so yeah so what does that have to do with the lambs well somewhere along the way they also stopped like really wanting to support lambs like they're in the rules but They've, as I understand it, because again, I've never used them in the game, uh, they have a lot of restrictions on them now as far as what technologies can be used in them, their weight class, and everything else. And in the setting, they're all but extinct because they were a technology created by the Star League. So they were like a more, a really advanced technology created by the Star League because they're a very specialized unit. Uh, there's only so many uses you actually have for them because in mech mode they're not as good as a mech as their weight class because they lose tonnage for the transformation machinery inside of them as an aerospace fighter they're not as good as an aerospace fighter is the same weight i think we're supposedly what i read from where they shine is air mech mode uh, and their biggest their, their biggest advantages are that they can take up less space in the drop ships as an aerospace fighter deploy in space and come down through the atmosphere then transform uh, and they are uh, very adept at like hit and run tactics because they're faster than any other mech and so you basically you hit the other side of the map hit artillery or they're ultra heavy that's sitting on something or whatever and then skedaddle back out of there you don't stick around for a stand-up fight because you will lose. Uh, so they're they're very they're very specialized. And there's only so many scenarios you can use them in. You've usually got to be playing on a big map so that they can actually do their thing. Uh, but that that applies to other things too. Like in the game, scouts and other things like that are a lot more effective in a bigger game. Uh, so anyway, so then the word of Blake developed some of them. Uh, the clans do not have them. As far as I'm aware, uh, the Scorpio Imperium, which is Clan Goliath Scorpion in now in the Inner Sphere, they probably have some because they collect old Star League relics. 
and they would be the ones most likely to have functioning ones. Uh, then I believe like the Raven Alliance would be the clan most likely to develop new ones because they're heavy into aerospace stuff. So, you know, if we're ever going to see new ones, that's where they're going to come from. If we're going to see, we're probably not going to see miniatures of the originals, like as they appeared, they'll probably go for the Project Phoenix versions if they release miniatures of them. As far as plastic, they're in metal. Uh, but so far they don't have updated artwork. Which all finally brings us to what we're talking about here. The Urban Mech Lamb. This is not a canon unit. They've already stated this This doesn't exist in canon. Uh, one of the people that's on the uh, group that's redoing all the artwork, I believe Bishop Steiner, uh, threw this out there a couple years ago. I don't know if it's meant as a joke, but a lot of people were like, I'll take one of those. And so, because we now know, because a lot of people didn't have a positive reaction to this thing being real and getting a plastic miniature. So Catalyst sent one of their people out to the forums to kind of clarify some things, basically telling everybody, hey, look, I know a lot of you are sitting there saying, oh, this is just some dumbass meme that you people just keep doing and you keep doing and it's past its prime. and rah, 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 rah. These people need to get a life. They uh, basically stated... In no uncertain terms, Urban Mech stuff sells. Meme or not, it's selling. If it didn't sell, there it would have stopped with just the single Urban Mechs. You know, but they kept selling. So they made a company of Urban Mechs, and those keep selling. And then they made the Urban Mech Lance with the different armaments, and those keep selling. They made the Urban Mech Plushie. That kept selling. So now there's actually two of them plus a bunch of other plushies. Urban Mech stuff sells. I have an Urban Mech t-shirt. I haven't worn it here on the channel yet. Actually, I haven't worn it yet at all. I got it at Gen Con last year, and I still need to get that out. I'll bust it out for the next Battletech video if I think about it. But Urban Mech stuff sells. That's why they keep making it. So, where do you go from there? Why, well, you go to the Urban Mech Lamb, apparently. So, these are going to be available. Uh, hopefully, most of this time, I've had a picture over here somewhere, if I've done the editing correctly. But just in case I haven't, it's going to come in a box, similar to like the Lance Packs. But what it's going to have is... The uh, regular mode, the air mech mode, and the aerospace mode, and I think like a jump jet plume it looks like. So it's, it's got all the modes in one box. Uh, even though it's technically a salvage box, like, because it's just the one unit, but you have all of them. So, depending on how you plan on using them, uh, one box gets you, still gets you three mechs. So... Don't know what the price point is yet. They're probably going to be primarily for conventions and the web store. So uh, that means the first time I'm probably going to come across them is if they put them on the web store before Gen Con. And if they do, I'll definitely get one and unbox it because I'm going to use them. Like, I'm definitely going to be painting them up in Lao colors. So uh, stats might be hard to come by because if it's unofficial, I'm not 100% certain they're going to make stats for them. So we'll see. Because uh, I think they might break some of the normal rules for aerospace stuff. Uh, but again, I don't use aerospace like stuff because I don't play very often and I haven't had a chance to use any of it, so I don't know. But uh, yeah. So, the other part of the little video here is that, my god, the salt that is pouring forth because of this. Like... I get the people that don't like Urban Mechs, they think it's a meme that's out of date, and the people that don't like Lambs, and that one guy in the forum that doesn't like either one, uh, I don't remember his exact quote one time, but it was something along the lines of, if I had a gun and two bullets, and Lambs, I don't remember what the other two things were in the room, he's like, I'd use both bullets on the Lamb, or something to that effect, you know. So, yeah, he, he really doesn't like them. Uh, I'm not going to call him out by name. I don't want people going to harass him. Um, so, you know, you can go to the Battletech forums. I'm sure you probably figure out who I'm talking about. Uh, but don't go harass him. Like, you know, he's, he's perfectly entitled to his opinion and, and expressing it. So, you know, you know, when everyone, you know, same same opinions, everyone having the same opinion, that's, that just leads to a boring world. So, anyway. Uh, then, then the pontificating there. So... 
Yeah, but there are some people that are just like, oh, why the hell did they make this? Oh, they're wasting time and energy on this thing. And oh, it's, it's a thing that's just gone too far. And you stupid people that keep buying these stupid things. And I'm just sitting there like, you know, they keep making them because they keep selling. And if they keep selling, they're keeping, they're, they're making a profit. They are allowing other products to be made. You know, like... This is like the people that complain, oh, there's too many MCU movies and Star Wars movies and, and DCU movies. I don't ever really hear any of that complaint, but you know what I'm talking about. There's too many big budget blockbusters. Well, yes, there are, but back when they were all making Buku Bucks, that was what was funding the other movies. You know, what allows the studios to take a gamble on a whole bunch of smaller projects is the big project that brings in all the money. Now, of course, economics have lopsided and, you know, they're not making the money they were and they should probably go back to mid-level projects and lower, like Jim and I have mentioned several times on the channel here. But that's a whole other argument. But yeah, you know, you make the products that for sure will sell and make a profit so that you have some money to take a chance on other products, you know, to take a chance on I, I, the regular lambs, maybe. Or, I don't know, maybe the, uh, oh god, I can't think of what, the word of Blake mix, the Celestials, you know, like, people seem to want them, but, like, that's such a, just a narrow niche, like, this existed for one moment in time in the Battletech universe, for one faction, uh, arguably the Republic probably still had them, and which means now Clan Wolf probably still has them. But, you know, it's just such a narrow, like, this thing only existed for a brief period of time for a faction that I wouldn't think would be all that popular. But then again, maybe it is. I don't know. I mean, I play the crazies. Jade Falcons, the Lao. Maybe I play the Word of Blake. You never know. I don't want to paint my next white, though. White's kind of a pain in the ass to paint. But, uh, yeah, so, you know... I'm I'm welcoming these things. I'm going to buy four of these damn things to make a whole lance of urban mech lambs. There'll be a, a secret project from the Capellans, since the Capellans own the most lambs, so I can spring them on Chad sometime. Although he seemed to be pretty receptive to it, too, so he'll probably have his own. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, these, uh, I'm, I'm all for it, you know. If, uh, as long as, like, the memes don't totally take over the line, you know, the occasional meme product, I think it's great. I have one of the Urban Mech plushies. I'll, I'll do a video of that sometime, too. Because uh, I was like, because when I you know, it's from the, the Kickstarter. And I was like, well, you know, when is this? This is it. Like, this is, the, no one's going to be silly enough to buy these things in number. So, why not? And then they were, and now there's a bunch of them. But I'm not buying any. I don't think I'm going to buy any others, though. Because it was a one-off that I just thought, you know, this is my one chance of getting something like this. It's kind of silly. Why not? You know, I don't have a bunch of stuffed animals. Or Battle Max in this case, I guess. So, I don't know. But anyway, uh, I look forward to this a lot. And if you made it this far, there's also another video I'm going to be doing here shortly. That It's going to be a, a computer video because someone has posted a list that supposedly came from KarinskyCon, which is the... Well, I'll explain it later in another video. Uh, the important part is... All the folks from Battletech, all the Battletech creators were there, and like some people that dumped a ton of money in the Kickstarter campaigns were there. Because uh, they want their input, because these are people clearly invested in it. And you know, they want to show off some stuff coming up, they want their input, and you know, it's it's a little it's not a it's not a convention, because there's like ten people that get to go. Uh, or, or twenty or something. It's a low number. I don't know. I didn't have five thousand dollars to dump on it, so I didn't do it. Not 100% certain I would if I had $5,000. Like, that that's a lot. Uh, I mean, you got a lot of stuff out of it, though, so hmm, maybe. Probably not, though. But uh, yeah, more, more power to everyone that did. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to sit here and say it's a silly expenditure. Just for me personally, it might not be the greatest return, but, you know, for anyone that has it, you know, more power to you. Uh, but anyway, there was a spreadsheet revealed. There's a spreadsheet from there, claimed to be from there anyway, that appears to have Battletech products out to like 2027 on it. So, at least as of this recording, for all I know, as I'm recording this, someone from Catalyst has come up there, oh, that's all baloney, then no, that's real. But, you know, if up until the point I record that, if I still haven't heard that, I'm going to record that video. 
So look for that because uh, I looked at the stuff last night and there's a lot of stuff there. Some things that aren't there that I'm, I'm concerned about uh, a little bit. Uh, not not a major concern. I think it's just because you know we're talking. This plan's three years out. You know I don't expect any American company to have plan. I don't expect American companies to have plans three years out. Forget the additional year it would take to get the other stuff I'm talking about. But uh, yeah. So anyway, let me know what you guys think of the Urban Mac Lamb. Uh, do you want me to do a video about Project Phoenix? Like I mentioned, and I will try to explain Kerensky Con in the other video. So you know. But uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think. Are you going to buy these? Do you think they're cool? think they're stupid? You know, think people are just being salty? Uh, let me know down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And, uh, and keep an eye out. Once I actually get one of these, there will definitely be an unboxing. But uh, anyway, thank you folks for watching. And remember, no guts, no galaxy.